بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وحمد الشاكرين أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الطاهر الزكي الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وألف بين قلوبهم لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم قال تعالى في مقام آخر إنما المؤمنون إخوة وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا أو لا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتم وتحاببتم أفشوا السلام بينكم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزلنا علما ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه واتباعه واهل بيته اجمعين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent into this world as a guide to the entirety of mankind. He taught us many things. But amongst the things he taught us, the instructions, the rulings, how to live our life, was that our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us how to live as one united Ummah, one community, one nation, one brotherhood. And Rasulullah established these pillars these foundations in Mecca when the Muslims were being oppressed. At that point, the seeds were being sown, being planted for brotherhood, for unity. And in Medina al Munawwara, when Rasulullah moved to Medina, the same thing. Allah Taala says in the Quran, speaking about the two tribes that were in Medina. They'd been fighting for a hundred years, more than a hundred years, so much so that the people that were fighting there didn't know why they're fighting, but they were just fighting. Because our grandparents also fought your grandparents, so we're going to fight your youth. And these people, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to these people, and now he had the unenviable task of uniting them. And it happened; they were united after years. And Allah Taala says He takes favor upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "وَأَلَّفَ تَبَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ." Allah united their hearts. وَلَوْ لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا if you were to spend every single thing in this world, ma alaf ta bayna qulubihim, you wouldn't be able to unite their hearts. But akin Allah alaf ta bayna. Allah united their hearts. So Allah never, very rarely does Allah call out a favor He did for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This one Allah calls out to show how hard it is to create unity, brotherhood between tribes, between nations, between Muslims. But Allah is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if you it were less, if it if it was left to you, even if you had wealth, you had influence. You wouldn't be able to unite these tribes. Allah did it. Another verse Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِلْجَلَمْ It was only and only through the mercy of your Lord that you were soft in nature and because of this they united. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيلَ الْقَلْبِ If you are harsh, natured, um, stubborn, mean, rude, غَلِيلَ الْقَلْبِ Hard-hearted. لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِ These people would have moved away from you, they would run away from you, scattered. Why would they need to be around you, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Again, Allah is saying, from our mercy, we did this. Normally, Allah is praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you did this, you did this. Here, Allah is saying, through our mercy, you only managed to do this. This unity which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was allowed to create, was given the ability to create within Medina, how did it come about? Let's look at what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built, how he built this community in Medina. And this community in Medina is a a mirror for us, it's an ideal for us in the entire world. I in my home, on my street, in my town, in my island, and the entire world, I think this community that we want to build as a Muslim community, it just it just has to be built upon the Madani community. What Rasulullah did in Medina, I want to happen in my home and in the entire world. When Rasulullah first came to Medina to Munawwara, Abdullah ibn Salam was a, a Jewish scholar, a rabbi, but he had that knowledge of the previous scriptures and he came to see who Rasulullah was. He said, 
فلما رأيته عرفت أن وجهه ليس بوجه كاذب. As soon as I seen his face, I straight away knew this is not the face of a liar. And what was the first instruction Rasulullah gave? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ayyuhan nas, afshu salam, O people, spread salam, spread salam." First thing, Rasulullah is telling them that I don't care about this hundred years of battle. I don't care about your enmity and this uh, hatred for one another, jealousy, whatever. Start by spreading salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As soon as you say assalam, what happens? Number one, you're taking Allah's name and the name of Allah, which means peace. Number two, you are saying to a person, you have no need to fear me. Salimun minni alayk. You are safe from me. Straight away, it's our proclamation and announcement that you are safe from me. Assalamu. That's why actually Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that don't start by saying alayk as-salam because ayn sounds a bit harsh. Start by saying alayk as-salam, so many men get a little scared. Start by saying assalamu alaykum. Um, wa rahmatullah, you're also saying Allah's mercy and Allah's blessings be upon a person. So Rasulullah is saying start by saying salam. Once Rasulullah said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will not enter paradise until you have iman. This is obvious. And you will not have iman until you love one another. Allah is saying, you will not enter paradise until you love one another. If I believe I will just love Allah wa ta'ala and worship Allah, that will enter me to Jannah, this is not possible. Allah is saying that condition of entering Jannah is Iman, the condition of Iman is loving one another. Then Rasulullah doesn't make this proclamation and leaves us, he gives us the way. Rasulullah said then, should I not show you such a thing which will increase the love between one another? He said, giving salam upon those you recognize, those you know and those you don't. Some of us people, we want to just give salam to those we know. And if not, this is not just related to salam. Is how we welcome someone. Sometimes we'll go, there'll be a crowd of 10 people, salam, 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 salam. The person we know, we give him a big hug. Then we carry on, salam, salam. How does that make the others feel? Rasulullah said, Taqraw salam ala man arafta wa man lam ta'ni. He said, from the sign of the day of judgment is that people start giving salam to only personal people, specific people. In this crowd, I know three, four people. How are you? How are you? The rest I leave out. This is a sign of the day of judgment. Because this is a sign of breaking up the hearts. This unity is very important. Love for one another. Creating a bond. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'mini kal bunyan. A believer is like a brick for another believer. And Rasulullah actually put his hands like this. Ya shuddu ba'duhu ba'dah. We strengthen one another. We're supposed to raise one another. Here, not here. As Muslims, suddenly we become people who are putting other people down. Forget me not praising someone else. I don't even like it when someone else is praised in front of me. If someone is praising someone else, I have to say something just to put that person down. I don't even want people being praised in front of me. We have to be people who praise. We have to be generous in our praise, in our words. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants two great sahaba, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an and Abu Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu an. Two great sahaba. They had a quarrel, they had an argument. They were always going after one another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that what's happening and they mentioned. Then Rasulullah said, Abdurrahman bin Awf, he said to Khalid bin Walid, Abdurrahman bin Awf is a Badri. He's one of the Sahaba who participated in Badr. So leave him alone. You can't touch him. And he's also one of the ten who have been promised Jannah. So leave him alone. These are, these are virtues that you won't be able to attain. He's also one of the first to accept Islam. So now Abdurrahman bin Awf was about happy, yes. Although Rasulullah has taken my side. Then Rasulullah turned to Abdurrahman bin Awf and he said, Khalid bin Walid is the sword of Allah. So don't you say anything to him either. Here Rasulullah so praised both parties, kept them both happy. And they both came away, not only with love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi with more love for one another. But we want to put people down, um, we want to chastise people. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that ittaqillah walau bishikitam. Fear the fire, ittaqunnar walau bishikitam. Even if it's from a piece of a date, not even the entire date, you have half a date and you're breaking a fast, take half and feed someone else. You get the reward of his fast, his or her fast. This is saving yourself with a piece of date. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ If you can't even find this, فَبِكَلِمَةٍ طَيِّبًا Then at least with a kind word, with a nice word. We mentioned how words can have such an impact upon people. Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah used to go to the marketplace every day. Shabi seen him, he said, you're an intelligent boy, why do you waste your time in the marketplace? This changed his entire life, just that one sentence. And then he became a, such a great scholar, Imam Al-Azam, the greatest Imam. So, words can have such an impact upon people. We have to make sure our tongues are not such. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that a person, a servant, sometimes says such a word. 
such a word, he doesn't think much of it, and this word drops him into the fire of Jahannam, the depth of more than the heaven and the earth. One word. He's not even thought about it, didn't even double think. He doesn't have any, you know, he just walks off after saying this. But this has dropped him in the depth of fire of Jahannam, more than the heavens and the earth. And then Rasulullah said, the slipping of the tongue is much worse than the slipping of the feet. We slip on our feet, we graze our knees, and we think, oh, man, such a bad day today. It's going to be a bad day now. Woke me in the morning, fell off the bed. It must be a bad day. Rasulullah is saying the slipping of the tongue is much more and much worse than the slipping of the feet. So we have to see how we use this tongue just for good. Rasulullah so once told the Sahaba, said that man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir who believes in Allah on the final day then he should he should do a few things he should he should look after his guests look after the ill then he also said he should speak good or stay quiet that's our two options speak good or stay quiet we seem to have forgotten all these building blocks of the community of I was just on afsh salam for rasulullah's first instructions when entering medina rasulullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he used to go with his student and he used to go make salam in the marketplace and come back the student said to him you don't buy anything you don't even looking at anything you're not bartering, you're not bargaining, you're not even checking prices. Why do you go to the marketplace? He said, we only go to make salam, to increase bonds between one another. Rasulullah taught us when we enter the house, he taught Anas bin Malik, his young, uh, young child, that as soon as you enter the house, then just give salam out loud. This will be blessings for you and the entire house. This has gone out of us. We have to make sure we start to increase ourselves in salam. The second, Afshu salam, wa at'imu ta'am, feed one another. Feed people, feed all. Rasulullah didn't say feed the needy, feed the poor. But, or even feed Muslims, feed everyone. Become people who give. Rasulullah said, the giving hand is much better than the taking hand. We have to be people who are giving. Ummul Masakin, uh, Zainab radiallahu anha, she used to give so much that they mentioned that money used to come in the morning, she wouldn't sleep that night. It has to be gone. Yes, she used to get the slave girls and make sure you give it out, give it out, give it out to everyone. And then eventually they've come back and told her, yes, all the money that came in the sadaqah that we've given it out, then she used to rest. And then she passed away, Rasulullah said, the one with the longest arms will go first. And it was her because of how much she used to give. You have to see how we can become people of giving. Allah Ta'ala, when he's describing the difference between Abu Bakr Siddiq and Abu Jahl. So the greatest believer after Rasulullah Sallallahu and Abu Jahl, the greatest enemy of Islam within this, within this ummah. Allah Ta'ala starts not by commending his iman or criticizing his kufr. Allah starts by talking about how one gives and one doesn't give. Allah says, As for the one who gives and fears Allah. So Allah mentions the giving first because Abu Bakr Siddiq feed so many slaves and he did so many good things. And the other one, As for the one who is stingy, miserly. So Allah doesn't even describe Abu Jahl first as the one who disbelieved, hurt the Prophet. Stingy, miserly, and then he also denied the truth. So we have to understand that we have become people of giving our hearts have to expand. We become such that Rasulullah, how he mentioned, a person will stop giving, stop giving, until it becomes like titans upon him. Then he can't even give when he wants to. Then we hear something bad happening, now I have to ring home, have we got enough, enough savings for this month? How's next month gonna be? Business might go down. So I'm, just to give a little bit, I'm struggling. So we have to become people of giving. Connect ties, make ties, build ties. We become people who take praise, take pride in cutting people off. You know, you tell your, we tell our children, oh, you can't go eat at this uncle's house. Why? Don't worry about why, but just you can't go. Or this person won't be coming, why? Just don't ask. Or this, you know, we've just become people who are there to cut ties. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that when to join ties, a person is even allowed to lie. A person is even allowed to lie. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that if you want to gather between two parties and create uh, justice and peace between two parties, you're even allowed to go and lie to both parties just to get them together. Obviously, you don't do it to put yourself in the wrong as well, or they'll come back to you. But you make sure that, you know, you try to cover up some faults here, some faults there, and you make sure the parties get together. In fact, Allah Taala and the Day Judgment will also bring two parties together. In the Hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says that two people will come in front of Allah on the Day of Judgment. And one would say, he's wronged me and this and that. Allah would say to one who has done the wronging, no, who who was wronged? He's not forgiven because he wants some good. Allah will say to him, "Look over there." He says, "Do you not see that palace?" The man will say, "Yes." He said, "Don't you want that palace?" He said, "Of course." He said, "What's the price?" He said, "You just have to forgive him." He said, Allah would say, "You just have to forgive him," and the man will say, "Of course, I forgive him. I want that palace." <coughs> Allah would say, "That's it. Both of you, you can go. You both go to Jannah." So even on the day of judgment, Allah is actually bonding between two people. 
And then Rasulullah said, if Allah does it over there, we should be doing it over here. If we become people who are covering faults, not taking out faults, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ayyara akhahu, whoever criticizes, take faults out of another believer, then he will fall into that same issue before he dies. If I say to all oh, you, you're doing this sin, why are you so weak? Can you just hold, you know, can you just be strong? Allah will put you in that sin before you die. Allah will try you. Whoever is happy with another believer's uh, hardship, difficulty, Allah will put him in that difficulty before he dies. You have to become people who are sympathizing, covering faults. Rasulullah said, whoever covers the fault of a believer is as if a person who has resurrected a young child. Before, in the times of ignorance, Rasulullah in the times of ignorance, the people, the, the people were, were a bit embarrassed to have daughters. So they used to bury their daughters alive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, a person who covers the fault of a believer, it's as if he's brought one of them daughters back to life. Imagine, just covering the fault of a believer. So you have to be people who are building communities, building ties, joining, not breaking. This is very important. You know, the heart of a believer is much more important than the Kaaba. And I mentioned the other week regarding Masjid Al-Aqsa, more important than Masjid Al-Aqsa is the heart of the people of Palestine. More important than the building this city here and Turkey is the hearts of the believers. If I'm breaking hearts over here, I shouldn't worry about oh, Masjid Al-Aqsa, what's happening there, what's happening in these places. I should be thinking, why am I breaking the hearts of Muslims? You have to be people who are mending hearts, mending the hearts of believers. Once Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one Sahabi, he passed away, Umayr. So he passed away and now all the people are coming back from Uhud, the one battle. And you know, the children are coming out to meet their family members. And Rasulullah sees these three young children, they're looking for their father, and they don't see him. Mother's already passed away. They're looking for their father, they don't see the father. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he notices this. I mean, who else would notice this as well? And he goes to them, and he hugs them, he brings them close. Then he says to them, they say, where's, where's our father? Is he coming back? Is he got late? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, wouldn't you be happy if I became your father and Aisha became your mother? If I became your father and Aisha became your mother. That's how we have to be. That we, we be the first to, to be there for people, to be there for youngsters, to be there for elders. We've lost this of helping people out, finding out who's ill. We went to one masjid um, in Australia after Fajr. They sit down and they have a long circle. And then the imam or the elder will speak. And they will say, okay, this, this person is ill. Who's going to go visit them today? This, this orphan needs looking after this widow. She needs this shopping done, who's going to do this? And this is how the community should be. Or else our masjid is going to be a place of worship, it's going to be dry. It's going to be where, no, you come here, you read Quran and that's it. You can't come here for your problems, don't bring your problems to the masjid, don't bring your problems to the Muslims. Rather, we should be people, do you have any issues? Do you need anything done? That's how when Rasulullah sallallahu came to Fajr Salah once and then he said, who today has gone to see an ill person, Abu Bakr radiallahu put his hand up, who here is fasting? who he has followed the janazah of Bukhara and put his hand up and Rasulullah said that any person who gathers these kind of qualities will be in Jannah. And that's why Abu Bakr will be called from all the different doors of Jannah. Come to me, come to me, the door of charity, the door of fasting. Because he balanced every single branch of Islam, every single tenant of faith. We seem to be restricting Islam. I've been mentioning the same kind of theme for a few weeks because we seem to be not getting into our head about what a community, what Allah wants from a community. So I'll wrap up now. That as a community, we have to ensure that we are looking at other people's needs. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At'imul jai, feed the poor people. In the hadith, again, when Rasulullah came to Madinat Munawwara, he said, spread salam, feed the poor, uh, build ties. And last thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, pray salah at night. That after you do all of this, turn to Allah wa and say, Allah, I did all of this for you. Put blessings in whatever help we've been doing, whatever charity we've been doing, whatever good work we've been doing between the people. And then Rasulullah said, if you do all of this, then the al Jannah is All of you will enter Jannah with the peace and with the blessing of Allah wa ta'ala. Allah gives us ability to act upon what we said.